Welcome everyone. My name is Sandy Pratt. I am the president of Underpinned. Thank you for joining us today. Excited to be here with everyone today. <clears throat> we'll get started with our program momentarily. Uh, before I introduce our first speaker, I would like to take an opportunity to brief you on a few housekeeping items. Um, you'll have an opportunity to answer to um, enter your questions and the panelists will respond to that at the end of the webinar. We are working with multiple time zones, so portions of the presentation were pre-recorded for today's webinar. You may notice a quick transition as we upload the presentation. The Q&A will be live. Later in the webinar, I will ask you to please type your questions in the Q&A box indicating which speaker you would like to address those questions to. Then I'll read those questions and direct them to our panelists. Also, there will be a quick three-question survey following the Deputy Secretary General's presentation. We will pause to review the responses and move on to our third and final speaker. Now I would like to introduce to you the Director of the New York Office of the Board of Investment of Thailand, Varwan Nor Sucha, who will give you an overview of the Board of Investment and the services and support they offer. Thank you. For your kind introduction. And good morning, everybody. Let me take a few minutes to give you some background about the Thailand Board of Investment and our services. I think we better start from my next slide to show that doing business in Thailand as a foreigner is very easy and there are so many options. It can be done either with or without the BI promotion. The advantage of being the BI promoted project is that you will receive the tax incentive and also the ease of doing business, which helps to reduce the operation cost of your business. Another advantage is that uh, it's the easy, easier way to get uh, uh, permission to operate business in Thailand because now we are linking our database with the Department of Business Development. So the foreign business certificate can be now applied online. However, if your business cannot uh, classify under our eligible activities, you also have more choices to get the foreign business license, even um, applying directly at the Department of Business Development, or the U.S. investor can take, uh, I mean, can benefit from the U.S.-Thailand Treaty of Amity and Economic Relations as well. The Thailand Board of Investment, or the BOI, is an economic development organization under the office of the Prime Minister. The board is chaired by the Prime Minister, and we provide a wide range free of charge services to the investor since day one before you're making the decision to invest in Thailand, such as uh, we uh, have the business support services like a uh, one-stop shop by consolidating staff from relevant agency under one roof and provide faster and easier process starting from company registration um, visa and work permit uh, submission. We also provide the comprehensive information and advice on establishing operation in Thailand and uh, no regulation on BI promotion. We connect the investor with uh, private sector and government agency to facilitate the business operation. The Smart Visa program also initiated to attract highly skilled people, um, professional talent from overseas to work and stay in Thailand by offering four-year working visa and there is no requirement for the re-entry process. We have the uh, fast track services at international airport. The BOI also coordinate, facilitate, and support the industrial linkage activities, uh, such as sourcing services and business matching to find a potential subcontractor and supplier for you. Uh, our headquarter is in Bangkok, and there are 16 overseas offices around the world. There are two offices in the U.S. My team and I are based in New York. We are here to help and support the U.S. investor in the East Coast, including Canada. 
our colleagues in LA are looking after the US investor in the West and Mexico. With our incentive packages and supporting program, I'm proud to present that Thailand is the second home of the leading multinational companies in various sector, uh, such as automotive and parts, electronics, petrochemicals, oil and gas, and bio-based industry. And here are some uh, sample of the US company who, have, who already have footprint in Thailand and many of them have got real promotion even more than one project. My last slide will show you the investment project from US uh, application submission to the BOI during 2018 until 2020. Uh, for your information, the total FDI last year was around 10 billion US dollars. And we are very happy to see the increasing trend of the investment from US to Thailand, which was the third rank for last year, uh, with the amount of investment around 820 million US dollars. And the major project came from bioplastic and electronic sector. Now let me turn over to the presentation of our executive from headquarter, Deputy Secretary General Son Green Prime who will share with you about the investment opportunity in Thailand and how important of the supply chain and sourcing service which can help your business. Before Deputy Secretary General presentation, I'd like to show you a short quick video of Thailand's infrastructure development and all of the ecosystem in progression to enhance the competitiveness of investment in Thailand. Please. Thailand has embarked on a progressive plan to transform its Eastern Economic Corridor, or EEC. By 2022, the EEC will be a hub for advanced technology industries, creating enormous business opportunities for the ASEAN region. Strong infrastructure is being built to connect land, sea and air transport networks. Utapau Airport is reimagined as an aviation logistics hub, while the Lemchabang Seaport is further developed into a sea transportation center. On land, high-speed rail and highways will connect the sea and airports with major urban and industrial centers. The smart city will feature a robust lifestyle. Along with its innovative plans, the EEC is set to position Thailand as a premier business and lifestyle location in the ASEAN region. Thailand taking off to new heights. Good morning. Thank you for joining our webinar on the investment and supply chain in Thailand. Why supply chain and investment become a concern of the world today? Actually, since the COVID-19 last year, it's become the concern because of the disruption of supply chain all over the world and now it's become a problem of many companies in the world. So I would like to offer Thailand is one of the options for the investment and supply chain. May I touch a little bit on the business performance and economy of Thailand. If you look at the ranking in the world of Thailand today, for the business performance, Thailand is number one and number two in terms of the best country to start a business and to invest in 2020. And economy of Thailand, it is a survey of Bloomberg and Pocket World in 2020. Thailand is number one for emerging market list for 2021 and it is the largest agricultural output. Number 12, it means Thailand can be the kitchen of the world. We can uh, support and supply the food for the world, especially during the COVID-19. You know, every country needs food because of the production has stopped. Also, the manufacturing output of Thailand, we are number 18 largest in the world. That means we can be the source of parts and raw material 
when you want to have the new source of raw material and part. In terms of living condition, Thailand also is number one, the least miserable country for 2020. It means if you invest in Thailand, your staff and your executive can live in Thailand very happy. And most of all, we are the 26th largest economy in the world, even though we are a small country. And this is the most important. The healthcare system of Thailand, we can prove during COVID-19, we can prove that Thailand can respond, can pr protect and prevent the COVID-19 pretty well. We are good preparing to control the COVID-19 and it shows from the Global Health Security Index. We got number six in the world and number one in Asia. And the score is more than 70. So it means we are ready. You can feel confident to invest in Thailand and to source the part and raw material in Thailand. Look at this map. What you get from this one? You see Thailand in yellow one. We are in the center of Asia. We are in the center of ASEAN. And what is ASEAN? ASEAN is the fifth largest economy globally. It has the consumer more than 600 million people. It's a big market. And if you combine ASEAN with two largest economies like China and India, so the consumer is more than 4 billion people. Apart from the location of Thailand that can easily access to the major market in the world, Thailand also has the FTA with 18 nations, including the big or major player in the world like China, Japan, Australia, New Zealand, and ASEAN. With the trade volume of each country more than 50 billion US dollars. Besides the FTA, Thailand also has the RTA regional trade agreement with other regions. It's a big region that has the population uh, more than one third of the world. For the ASEP, it's a new regional trade agreement, which we already signed in November 2020 with 15 nations. And this market is a big market, as I mentioned, one third of the world. So if you invest in Thailand, you can have this benefit, you know, to export your goods or import raw material and part from this country. Talking about infrastructure, because Thailand location is in the center of Asia and ASEAN, and we want to be the center, we want to be the business center in the world, especially in Asia. So the Thai government try to spend a lot of money, a lot of budget to improve and enhance the capacity of transportation in Thailand. So. There are about more than 100 projects for infrastructure development in Thailand. Uh, water transport, air transport, or road transport, even though the rail system now being under construction. For example, the air transport. We have 12 international airports, but we want to double capacity especially Suvannapum Airport, that is the big one and the third busiest in ASEAN. So in the near future, it's only six years, you know, after we complete the expansion, we will have double capacity. Highway and road in Thailand, we think that if we want to be the center of ASEAN, and neighboring countries, we have to improve our highway and road system.
So now we have 51 border trade checkpoint. So we have to, you know, improve our transportation on road and highway. And there's a lot of project under construction and expansion. The railway system is the high priority of the Thai government because at the moment we use less uh, transportation by rail system. So we put a lot of money to construct the high speed railway to connect with the major airport of Thailand and also it passed the major city, the major business city, the major industrial cluster and the major industrial zone in Thailand. So it will be easier for you to transport passenger and goods to these important areas. Apart from the hard infrastructure, the soft infrastructure that can increase or upgrade your competitiveness in the world is digital connectivity. For Thailand now, we have eight submarine cable projects and we are going to expand the project, you know, to connect with the Asia Pacific. So uh, if you invest in Thailand, you don't need to be worried to connect with the high technology on the digital industry. For the shipping and logistic, you know, we have, you know, actually in Thailand, we have three big deep sea ports and we are going to expand deep sea port in the eastern part of Thailand. Eastern part of Thailand, normally you will know it as the Eastern Economic Corridor and this is one of the important projects. We want to be the hub of modern and high technology. So we are building medical hub, we are building digital parks, and also we are building airport city. Apart from the eastern part of Thailand, we also have the special economic development zone at the border of Thailand is about 10 special economic zone that can support your investment and connect with the neighboring countries. So that is all, you know, the infrastructure and development to connect uh, your investment with the neighboring countries and other countries from Thailand. So, and what is the opportunity of investment in Thailand? This is the industry that we welcome more investment with the high incentive in Thailand. For example, medical hub, agricultural and biotechnology, and automation, smart electronic, digital economy. This is just example. And this industry, we give high incentive. I give you example of the incentive that the Thailand promote and grant for investor. The first one is important. If you get profit, you don't need to pay tax. You will get exemption for the corporate income tax. Exemption and reduction. And also, if you import raw material and machinery, you get exemption for the import duty as well. And your people that would like to work in Thailand, we provide a facilitated work permit and visa, you know, within a short time, within three hours. If your document is ready, is complete, you will get visa and work permit for our service. And also, if you invest in other countries, you may think about the land ownership. For Thailand, you can have the land ownership if you get promotion. And also, you can have 100% foreign ownership. You, know, you don't need to be worried that you need to have a partner in Thailand. And we will give incentive according to the activity and technology. If you think that your activity is important and technology is high, you can come to us and talk to us. The maximum incentive is about eight years, but if you have high and high technology, it can, you know, get up to 10 years. 
So now come back to the sourcing or supply chain. I give this example. It's a survey of JETRO. JETRO is the Japan External Trade Organization. That is the same survey that is done every year with the Japanese company that has the operation in many countries in Asia Pacific. From this information, it shows that the local content or local procurement in other countries or the countries that the Japanese company has operated. You see Thailand, the local procurement of part and raw material is more than 60. That means you can have the procurement, you can have the part that produced in Thailand to reduce your cost of production. You know, the highest one is China because China has a lot of company producing the part and raw material. But the ratio of the local procurement is 70%, but for Thailand is 60%. Also, this one is the procurement in major countries. But it showed the trend, you know, from 2010. For Thailand from 2010 until now, you will, you will see the trend that it is increasing. The ratio is increasing. But you may see that in 2013, it dropped a little bit because in, in that year, Thailand is just recovered from the big flooding in Thailand. So production now just recovered. So the sourcing of uh, raw material and part in Thailand may be dropped a little bit. And for the production cost, local production cost compared to Japan, you know, in Thailand, if you see Thailand on the right hand side, you see Thailand is around in the middle position if compared to other countries. It means Thailand, even though we are not the lowest one, you know, production cost in Thailand is not the lowest one, but it is in the middle. So I think you can, you know, manage your production cost in Thailand if you are sourcing something in Thailand. And if you ask the question, how will I can help you to source the part or procurement the part or raw material in Thailand? You see this one. We have the unit in BUI that can support your sourcing. We provide free sourcing service. If you invest in Thailand or even you are outside Thailand and you need to have some part in Thailand, you can contact BUI. Then we will coordinate and connect you with the local company. Since we start this service for about 10 years, we got the best linkage award in 2004 by the investment promotion agency. And now, you know, we can have the biggest or largest subcontracting exhibition in ASEAN. So it shows the potential of Thailand to be the destination of sourcing or supply chain in the world. And this is the activity that we have done to support the company that would like to source the part or raw material in Thailand. We have the database of the company in Thailand. We have the free sourcing service. We can have the business matching, or if we want to have the, the partner or technical assistant or doing something in Thailand with the Thai company, we also provide you know, the service with free of charge. This is an example of the company that will provide the service for part sourcing. It's the big major car maker in Thailand. And it is the big one in the world as well. Also on the left hand side is automotive industry, but on the right hand side is electronic and electrical industry. This is all the big company that we have, you know, the activity to get the ball for the past sourcing in Thailand. So come back to normal. If you want to invest in Thailand or if you are interested to invest in Thailand, we have one start, one stop investment center to help you. It is in the center of Bangkok and you can contact this uh, one-stop one-stop investment center by email or if you are 
convenient. You can call in advance to make appointment. And at this center, we have the government agency, other government agencies sitting there to help you if you request. And you can speed up your application for the license and permission from the Thai government at this center, especially the visa and work permit. As I mentioned before, if your document is complete, you can get it within three hours. Also, if you feel that you want more information, you can contact our New York office or if you feel convenient to contact at the headquarters also, you are very welcome. And moreover, if you want more information and you want to have the one-on-one -on -one meeting with the official or expert at the headquarters, you can contact our marketing division at this email that show in this slide, at the, on the left-hand side of this slide, you know, or I think it's easier, you know, you contact the New York office first and the New York office can coordinate with the marketing division that take care of the investment promotion. I think today you can have some information on investment and supply chain in Thailand. Thank you very, very much for joining and listening on the information of investment and supply chain in Thailand. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General. And next, we'll be posting a three-question survey to the webinar attendees uh, and asking you to respond to those online. We will share the results real time. So we will start with our first question. Um, have you ever been to Thailand? We'll give you a few seconds to respond to those, and then we'll share the results. We have results uh, for the response. Looks like the um, largest percentage have not been to Thailand, but a significant number um, have been to Thailand for business and for leisure, 33 and 27%. Now to our next question. Um, So we have responses also to the questions, what aspects of Davidson in Thailand are you interested in? Um, most are interested in greenfield investments, some interested in, ac in acquisitions as well. And the last one is which industry sector do you work in? Um, as you can see, pretty equal numbers between life sciences and healthcare and digital and electronics and small percentages across the other sectors as well. So thank you very much for those responses. So now I would like to introduce to you our third and final speaker, Mr. Dennis Meserol, Executive Director and Founding Partner of Tractus Asia. Mr. Meserol is an American based in Bangkok, working in markets across Asia. His firm, Tractus Asia, is the top site location consulting firm serving the Asian market. They offer market entry services, strategy and execution, corporate finance, economic development, and other strategic services helping to facilitate cross-border businesses. Tractus Asia has offices in 10 countries, and over the past 24 years, Mr. Meserol has built the firm into one of the world's most respected management consulting firms. So it's with great pleasure that I have the opportunity to turn the camera over to Dennis Meserol. Thank you. Thank you, Sandy, for that. Oops, sorry, I've got to close this up. Thank you, Sandy, for that great introduction. I hope everybody can hear me, do a sound check. Uh, let me know if you can't. Um, Sandy mentioned that, that I'm from the US, but uh, I'm, I'm in the US, I'm from a place called uh, Princeton, New Jersey, which is really close to the uh, 
New York offices of the BOI. So I've been there many times. Um, and in this pandemic situation, I'm missing, missing being back uh, and visiting from time to time, which I do. Uh, March 1st marks my 30th anniversary of working here in Thailand and, and, and in Asia. Uh, it's my second home um, and it's a great place to do business. Uh, and I hope to follow on the presentation from uh, Ms. Uh, Songlin to about the, some of the opportunities for investing in Thailand to give you some, uh, some practical insights in what it's like to actually invest here. Um, at 2020, so last December was our, actually our 25th anniversary. Um, we actually formed Tractus Asia here in Thailand uh, 25 years ago, and we used Thailand as our operating headquarters. Um, it's a great place for us to do our business across all of uh, the markets in Asia. And we've worked with about a thousand different companies, helping them to make informed decisions about what markets to invest in, where to, um, how to structure their investments, and, and how to uh, identify uh, attractive or optimal site locations for their manufacturing and service business. So I hope to be able to use some of that experience to give you an idea of, of where Thailand fits uh, in its investment attractiveness uh, in Asia. Um, things we're going to cover uh, are some of the practical aspects of investing in, in Thailand and in, in the growth sectors. I'm going to focus more on, on sort of the nuts and bolts of the investment process. Uh, to give you an understanding of some of the excellent operating conditions um, and the cost of doing business that companies consider uh, when making their investment location decisions. So we're going to look at kind of establishing a business. Uh, we're going to look at uh, the Foreign Business Act, which controls uh, what kinds of business activities that foreign foreigners and foreign companies can engage in. Uh, we're going to look a little bit at the investment incentives. Uh, look at some comparative costs and economic conditions, like where does Thailand fit? Uh, primarily within ASEAN in terms of its uh, operating uh, operating environment, um, and then look at some of the uh, the trade the multilateral and bilateral trade agreements that Thailand has that make it uh, an excellent place to set up regional businesses. Um, in terms of investing and setting up a company in Thailand, there's essentially four typical ways in which you can structure your business, and they'll, they'll be familiar with almost all of you. Um, those companies that want to uh, take the next step in investing uh, in Thailand. Let's say you've been exporting, you have a distributor uh, a distributor network, you're already selling your products here. Typically the next step for companies is looking to set up a, a representative office uh, so that they can manage those distributor networks, not only in Thailand, but Thailand makes an excellent base for doing that across Southeast Asia. Um, the one thing that you're, you can't do as a representative office uh, is actually do business. So you're not allowed to invoice, but you can support business development. You can, you can provide technical service support and support your sales and distribution networks throughout the uh, throughout Thailand and throughout the region. Um, the registering a company is, is a registering a foreign representative office is actually the easiest thing to do. And the capital requirements um, are quite low. As you can see, they're about $67,000 to get up uh, an office. If you need expatriates on the ground, uh, and they'll need, of course, work permits and visas, then it's about $100,000 of capital that you need to, to invest. Another structure uh, is, a, is a foreign branch office that's typical to a, a limited liability company, but it's actually uh, a, the local branch of your, your company based in the United States. Um, you can establish those. It's not a very common structure because from a legal perspective, it puts all the liability back into your, your parent company in the United States uh, and provides less protection that way. And so typically companies are not choosing branches um, in order to, to set up their businesses in Thailand, but there, you know, there are some exceptions. Uh, if you set up a, a branch and it's in a, a sector or a type of business activity that's restricted, you need a foreign business license for that to do that. And if it's not restricted, you just need something called a, a foreign, a commercial registration certificate. And I'll talk about that. And those are relatively easy to obtain and, and quick to obtain, which is the important part. Uh, the more typical structure uh, of, for setting up and investing in Thailand is uh, is a limited a limited company or in Thailand, the, the, in Thailand, it's called a limited company, a limited liability company. Um, 
And those are such that very similar to how you would set up an LLC or an S corp or even a C corp in the United States, the shareholders uh, are, are able to limit their liability to um, to the registry capital of the company. Similar to a, a branch office, the requirements for capitalization are, are relatively low. It really depends on, it's a minimum of uh, about uh, $67,000, depends on the exchange rate. Uh, if you need work permits and visas, then there, the capital requirements increase incrementally over that, but not, not onerously. There's also public companies in Thailand. Thailand has a really robust stock exchange. A lot of foreign companies that have invested in Thailand and had operations here for many years have gone on. The SET, it's called, um, in order to raise capital um, and or to sell um, their, their businesses uh, or, or parts of them. The other structure that you can use to register uh, companies in Thailand are called are partnerships. So or, re, ordinary partnerships and, and limited, li limited liability partnerships, again, very much similar to the partnership structure in the U.S., often very not often very used uh, by, by foreign investors. That's much more of a, a local structure that's used. Um, you can register a, a limited liability company uh, in as little as one day. Uh, and you know, based on our experience, it, it takes much more time than that. It takes you typically about 30 days to collect all the paperwork, get all the signatures signed to set up a company in Thailand if you're, if you're not here and you don't have all the documents with you. So when we work with companies to set them up, it takes about 30 days when the directors and the shareholders are, are in the United States or they're in other markets. Um, and then it, working with them to set up a memorandum of understanding. So once that's all done and you go to the Department of Business Development, in one day, you can you can get your co company registered. The next day, you can have uh, your foreign business certificate, which is something that's required. Uh, and then, if you require a foreign business license, that that can take from uh, several weeks to to just one or two months in those sectors that, that are restricted. And th the the sectors that are restricted for for foreigners to do business in Thailand are quite specific. The the ones that are regulated in many many markets around the world: banking, telecommunications inland transport and trucking and those types of things. Uh, it's, it's not, it's, it's not um, impossible to do business in those sectors, it, but it's conditional upon meeting certain requirements of registered capital. And in some cases, there are some restrictions on shareholding requirements, just like there are in a lot of other countries around the world. Now, um, while some of you may know that uh, Singapore is rated as sort of the, the best place in, in Asia and in the world to do business, the easiest place to do business. Um, and, it's, and, it, and they always advertise that it only takes one day to register a company. Uh, but what they've, they neglect to tell you and what you neglect to see in the statistics is, is it takes up to, it, with the last uh, company we worked with, it took us over three months to get all the paperwork and all the documentation required because of the regulations to, uh, for, for its, the, the know your customer requirements in a place like Singapore. Once those were all put together, it took a day, just like Thailand. So in actuality, the way we rate Thailand, it, it, it's a much easier place to set up, start up and set up a company uh, and to do business in, in many cases than, than a place like Singapore, which is on all the rankings, seems to be rated much more highly. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the operating in Thailand, setting up a company is very similar to the United States in the sense that you can do almost any kind of business here, unless it's on uh, some, unless it's controlled or restricted by something called the Foreign Business Act, um, and a, and a foreigner is considered to be a foreign individual. So if you have a, a non-Thai passport, or if you're a company that's not registered in Thailand. Or if you're a company that's registered in Thailand, if you already have one, let's say, uh, but 50% or more of the shares are owned by either foreign individuals or, or foreign companies. Um, so uh, those are the typical, and, and those are those restricted sectors are on these lists called lists one, two, and three under the Foreign Business Act. Very easy to, to, you can get a law firm or you can ask the BOI, they can help you understand which are the restricted sectors. And I'll talk a little bit more about how you can, how the BOI can help you to, uh, to meet some of the requirements of those sectors and be able to do business in these restricted ones. Now, one of the advantages of being uh, in the, uh, an American is that there is a uh, quite an old treaty that was uh, established between Thailand and the United States in the 1960s called the U.S.-Thai Treaty of Amity. Uh, and it's wonderful in the sense that it, it provides 
American citizens and American companies with almost national treatment, uh, meaning there a lot of the restrictions under the Foreign Business Act don't apply to American companies, making it even more easy to do business in Thailand for, for U.S. firms and U.S. individuals. You can see on the, on the slide here, there's only six real major activities uh, that even Americans under the, this treaty are um, restricted from doing business in. Uh, but, but that's minor compared to all of the sectors and all the opportunities that can be uh, that can be uh, that can be accessed by by investing in Thailand. To, to abide by this treaty, you go through the process of registering a company, just like I described before. Uh, and once the company is registered, then you register with the U.S. Embassy. It takes one day, uh, and the uh, the documents are completed. So highly efficient and very easy. Um, you know, and one of the ways to to be permitted to engage in some of the activities that are restricted by the Foreign Business Act, although a lot of them aren't. For example, all of manufacturing is not a restricted activity in Thailand. So if you're interested in manufacturing, um, that's you can easily invest in that sector. Uh, so the BOI promotes, uh, in as we've seen in the previous presentations, particular activities. The BY promotion allows you the ability to own land. If you're planning on setting up a manufacturing plant, you can actually have freehold title to land once you're approved by the BOI. Um, but there are also, the BOI has long had the reputation, uh, and it, it's been true that it, they've had some of the best investment incentives in Asia, and they continue to have them. This, um, this slide gives you an example of some of those. There's sort of two parts of it. One are just the standard incentives that apply to business activities. So the incentives, how much corporate income tax or, and typically the incentives are income tax related uh, for the most part are the most, the, the ones that are, that companies are always looking at. Uh, there's corporate income tax exemptions and reductions. Um, and there's also import duties on raw materials and equipment exemptions and reductions, depending on the types of activities that you're, that you're looking at. So the first uh, table there has got some of the more standard types of industries. And then there's technology-based um, activities that the BOI is trying to promote in these high technology segments. You can increase the amount of incentives that you would get um, if you put your investment in different geographic regions of Thailand. So uh, Ms. Sunklin talked about the EEC area. Um, if you invest in special economic zones or industrial states, states or science parks, you can get an additional um, two years of corporate income tax exemption and also reductions for an additional five years. And then if you're in really high tech, so the, the, the Board of Investment is trying to promote investments uh, to in businesses and activities that are moving up the, val the value chain and adding, adding value. Um, if you're investing in um, activities that do that, you can qualify for corporate income tax exemptions for even a longer period of time. Now, even without the BOI's very generous uh, income tax uh, incentives, investment incentives. Thailand has one of the lowest statutory uh, corporate income tax rates uh, in ASEAN at 20%. When you put on top of that, the corporate income tax uh, incentives that you can get from the BOI by being, being promoted, if you happen to be in those activities that give you the longest term, you can reduce that to about 13%. It's not the lowest you'll see, uh, amongst the peers in ASEAN. But if you look closely at what countries have the very, very lowest rates from an incentive basis, you can see they're not the easiest places to do business in, in, uh, in, in Asia or, um, or in ASEAN. Uh, and therefore, you need those extra incentives to make it uh, competitive to even consider them as, as potential locations. Um, I talked a little bit about registering a company and, and how easy that is to do business. But the World Bank has, as many of you may have seen, something called its, its, its Ease of Doing Business Index. Uh, and, and Thailand ranks third in on that index uh, amongst its peers in ASEAN. Uh, and also uh, very highly in terms of the uh, cost of setting up a business here in Thailand. There's many other factors that go into that Ease of Doing Business Index indicator. You can see them on, on the, the left there. Um, but it is truly a... a a, an easy place to do business, uh, to invest, to set up a company, and to, to operate a company. Now, uh, from a labor, from a cost perspective, uh, companies kind of the first thing they ask is, you know, what it, what's the labor force size? Thailand's not 
the largest labor force in, in ASEAN. It's not the largest country in ASEAN. It's also not the smallest. It's kind of in the middle there. And neither does it have the lowest minimum wages or even for skilled um, employees does it have the lowest salary levels. But it does have the advantage of having one, a, a well-educated labor force, a, 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 pretty, a very productive labor force. So it has this good balance of cost versus uh, wage costs versus the operating conditions of the, the labor force, which is what companies are looking for. They're looking for a good balanced location. It's not necessarily the, the lowest cost that drives investment decisions. Um, and if you look at how wage rates are growing, um, it, the wage growth rates over the last um, several years have been, been quite low. Uh, again, because the wages aren't at the rock bottom. So in places like Vietnam and, and Laos and Cambodia, had much lower base wages, the annual wages and salaries are growing at a much, much faster rate. And so that's something you need to consider uh, and you're, if you're looking for a place to invest over the long term. And, and companies that are committing investments in manufacturing operations on the ground, they're looking for, you know, over the next 10 to 20 years, those are decisions that are irrevocable. You're not going to be moving a plant. Um, uh, in the next uh, in the next three to five years, so you need to be looking at what's going to be happening with the trajectory of wages over time, and and Thailand has an advantage in that situation. Um, just to give you an idea of what I know, everybody that's in the U.S. a lot of not, not a lot of people are traveling, so you don't get to kind of feel what economic growth looks like. Um, the pandemic has hit uh, all, all of Asia; it's hit the world pretty much equally. You can see. The, the, all the negative numbers here are what's happened in uh, the year 2020, but you can see that uh, Thailand's on a trajectory to uh, achieve some positive growth in 2021, uh, thanks to its excellent reputation for having controlled, uh, you know, COVID uh, contagion here in, in Thailand. It's going to be one of the things that's going to be, it's going to drive um, its recovery very quickly. Um, lastly, this just gives you a little idea of if you're planning on using Thailand or if you haven't thought about using Thailand as a regional base, uh, it has an excellent network of free trade agreements within, um, ASEAN, within ASEAN, within Asia, and then across, um, across the world. The, the best uh, free trade agreement is, is AFTA, so the ASEAN Free Trade Agreement. It puts Thailand right at the center of a 600 million population economy um, uh, together. And it, it makes a great location to, to consider as for, for regional operations. Uh, and then you can see some of the other uh, kind of bilateral arrangements or Thailand benefits from its membership in ASEAN because ASEAN will have, for example, ASEAN and India have a free trade, free trade agreement. And then Thailand benefits from those regional agreements. So uh, it's a great, this is another great uh, um, factor to consider in, in making an investment decision. So with that, uh, we think it's a Thailand, as you can see, has this not it's not the lowest cost place to do business, but costs are not the only factor that companies take into consideration when they're making their investment decisions. When you're trying to find an optimal location, there's a balance between operating costs, investment costs and operating conditions. And based on our experience, uh, in the last five to 10 years, there's been very few companies where operating costs are more important than the operating conditions and what the operating and business environment is like. And, and Thailand has that excellent operating and business environment to, to offset its slightly higher operating costs. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a, a feeling for what it's like to do business and uh, look forward to entertaining any questions you might have. Right, excellent information. Thank you, Dennis. So now we'll move on to questions. Uh, we would ask you to enter your questions in the Q&A um, on the bottom of the webinar screen, and we'll take three to four questions depending on time. Uh, our first question that we have is, there are global travel restrictions based because of COVID. Can you tell me a bit about Thailand's pandemic travel regulations? Uh, and we would ask Dep Deputy Secretary General to respond to that one, please. Okay, thank you, Sandy, for your question. Okay, I will share you some information to enter to Thailand during the COVID-19. Oh. Okay, let's see this one. 
to enter to Thailand in the past before COVID-19, actually you need to have a visa. But uh, after COVID-19, before entering to Thailand, you need to have the certificate of entry. And where to get, where to get the, could you, could you see that? Oh. Yeah, one more time, maybe expand the, the frame. Okay. Could you see this, my slide? Excuse me? Not, not yet, Miss Sonia. Not yet. Oh, not, not yet? yet. Oh, okay. Again, please. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Mm. Okay. I would say that uh, after COVID-19, before entering to Thailand, you need to have the certificate of entry. Um, this one is uh, together with the visa. So you need to apply for a certificate of entry to Thailand first. So where to get the certificate of entry? Okay, you need to apply at the embassy or the consul general office by the online. You can download the, the, the application form and fill in the application form and then submit online uh, with the Thai embassy or the Thai consulate general. And they will pre-approve your certificate of entry within three working days. And after that, um, they will issue the certificate of entry within three working days as well. And after you get the certificate of entry, you can manage for the air ticket and booking the ASQ in Thailand. You know, for the ASQ in Thailand, we have many um, many types of the ASQ in Thailand. I'm not sure you see my slide. We, we don't see it now. Okay. So this is a type of quarantine in Thailand. When you enter to Thailand, you uh, need to have the quarantine. For the foreigners, you know, you may have different choice. You know, you will have the alternative state quarantine, that's mean ASQ, you know, and then you need 14 days and you have to pay for the hotel or the accommodation. Or also, if you come to Thailand through the land borders or seaport, you must have the ALQ, alternative local quarantine, or if you are come with the organization or with the company, with your company, you also, you know, uh, has you can you can have the choice of organizational quarantine. That means you have to you know uh, find out um, the accommodation that's sponsored by your organization or your company, and it is will be have to be approved by the government. All of this is fourteen days quarantine. But if your company or your executive would like to enter to Thailand, but they will stay less than 14 days. We also have another choice we call limited quarantine at the bottom of this slide. But this one, you know, there's a lot of, you know, procedure because you have to submit the travel uh, planning and you need to get approval from the uh, disease control department and they also has to accompany you to everywhere or the workplace that you are going to go and you need to uh, book the ASQ and uh, pay for the vehicle. So there's a lot of expense, you know, during the, uh, you are staying in Thailand, but this one is very useful for the company that would like to stay in Thailand less than 14 days. So this is all, you know, if you would like to enter to Thailand, at the moment. Right, very and, helpful, thank you. Yeah. Uh, we have another question for you as well, Deputy Secretary General. <clears throat> this next question is, does the Board of Investment help companies find partners for potential joint ventures? Mm -hmm. So if, 
they would like to have the partner in Thailand. In the BOI, maybe in my slide, I show that um, one of the service of the BOI, we call the linkage development unit or division. In that division, um, one of our service is to find out the partner or if you would like to have the company for joint venture with your investment in Thailand, we also provide a service. And what we are going to do for you is we have the counterpart. Uh, we have the private sector, we have the uh, network with the association, we have the network with the federation uh, industry in Thailand. Also, we have the network with the university that do, uh, doing business with uh, the private sector. So we have the counterpart, we have a lot of network. When you request, if you would like to have the partner or joint venture, you request to the BOI, uh, request to the BOI, you can request to our OC office or you contact the headquarters or you contact directly with our um, linkage development division. And then we will, you know, after we receive your request, we will announce your request to our to our counterpart and they will announce to their member, you know, the details of your request will be transferred to the member or the Thai company. Then if there are somebody interested, they will send back to BOI and then we will, okay, inform you that, okay, there's some company interest to have the joint venture or to talk to you, to dis discuss with you. Then after that, you know, if you would like to talk to them, you would like to visit them, or you would like to have appointment, we also provide a service. We can be your coordinator and, you know, doing business matching with you for you, or you would like to have some, you know, pre-arrangement. So we also provide a service, but all of this is free of charge, you know. So the first contacting point is BOI and you can contact BOI office in every division, they will transfer information for your request of joint venture to the linkage development unit. This is all the service that we do for the joint venture. Excellent. Thank you, Deputy Secretary General. Our next question is for Dennis. Um, <clears throat> where are you seeing the most investment in Thailand? Bangkok or some other special, special economic zones described in the presentation? Well, <laughs> I'm going to answer like a typical advisor. It kind of depends. So it, almost all the investments outside of Bangkok, there's actually a project that we're working on right now that, that could be Bangkok or very close by uh, just because of the type of high value it is. But for the most part, uh, it's outside of Bangkok in these uh, industrial estates, uh, special economic zones. Yes, that's typically the kind of locations that investors are looking at. Okay, great. Thank you, Dennis. <clears throat> Our next question um, is for Barwan. Uh, since the pandemic, have you seen investment from the U.S. increase or decrease in Thailand? I think we have a good performance on the um, pandemic management. And as I mentioned in my last slide that the U.S. still uh, be the third rank of the investor to Thailand. So we are trying to do our best to support the US investor. And I think uh, there will be an increasing trend of the US investor to Thailand. Next. Okay. Uh, I think we have time for one more question from um, for Dennis. So <clears throat> what types of industries are you seeing? And I guess also, um, maybe in that conversation, is what is the most recent American company you've worked with in Thailand, uh, both for Bar One and Dennis as well? Yeah, the um, we're seeing a lot of, the uh, last couple, couple of years, we've, been, we've worked with a lot of food processing companies, um, and then automotive, automotive components. So automotive components have been companies that are looking to uh, adjust their supply chains out of China. So Thailand is, is always on these firms' uh, radar screen in terms of looking at a, a, what, you know, what's called a China plus one strategy. You need to, people, companies need to be invested in China, but where else would they look for in Thailand's high on the list of alternative locations, regional locations? 
Uh, and then on the food side, it's been uh, food processing, you know, some of the modern food processing, sort of plant-based dairy alternative products um, and, and other uh, processed frozen, frozen foods. We worked on a couple of projects looking at, uh, in, at those sectors. Some, some, some with American uh, investors and some with uh, regional and some with European. Perfect. So with that, um, we'll end our questions. And now we would like to conclude with some final words from Barwan Norsucha. Thank you so much. Yeah, on behalf of Thailand Board of Investment and New York office, I would like to express our sincere thanks to all of the speakers, uh, our Deputy Secretary General Sun Green Primi, and also um, Mr. Dennis for your participation. And uh, uh, we would like to say a big thanks to all of the participants as well. And please remember that we are here in New York to support and just let us know any question about investment in Thailand and email us at the nyc at boi.go.th. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.